interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Shall we play a game? is what type of blackout are they predicting? An information blackout? A media blackout? Maybe they're predicting an internet shutdown, a blackout? Or maybe they're literally predicting a blackout, a power grid failure. If you take a look at the Economist magazine cover, The World in 2019, before they changed it, but that's another video, you see that it's got a jet black cover. They're predicting a blackout. It's also important to note that it's their 33rd year annual special issue looking ahead to the future, 2019. Next, I'd like to point you to a recent video game released. In Call of Duty 4, they have a new blackout mode. It's a battle royale session that competes with Fortnite. Now, when I looked it up on the website, this is what it says. Blackout decision points, part one. You've got some decisions to make. Here's what you need to know, so you make them wisely. Now, this blackout predictive programming just went into the heads of millions of children all over the world. Now let's take a look at these new Jordans. They were just released today, November 29th, 2018. The Air Jordan 33. Note the 33. But guess what these shoes are called? The Utility Blackout. Now that's predictive programming if I've ever seen it. Utility Blackout closes out the year strong in its blacked out representation of the future ready model providing unprecedented ease and speed in securing lockdown. Gets a little creepy when you read between the lines, huh? Why is everyone predicting a black future? A blacked out future? The predictive programming is everywhere once you learn to see it. It's also very important to note utility, utility blackout, could be considered internet blackout. Why? Because some people in the media have begun to say that the internet is actually a utility or that it should be regulated like a utility. So what are these shoes telling us? That those in power, 33, are going to have a utility blackout very very soon. Now hopefully that means all they're going to do is have an internet blackout. It's the same box as the other one. Exact same box. So when you take off the lid you're going to see the mylar wrapping in there. And it's going to have the Air Jordan paper branding on there. You can see the Air Jordan branding. Here is a little bit of audio from Air Traffic Control Tower. Please stay around! Please stay around! Is that the FedEx? It's Tower FedEx 49. FedEx 49, heavy, go around. Going around FedEx 49. Sir, sure, Captain, there was a uh, earthquake here. Aircraft, we're evacuating the trade for an earthquake, and uh, everybody's uh, standby. 
And uh, in fact, uh, the news producer just says, hey, John, he was going to ask me a question. And then all of a sudden, you just hear this thunder, this thunderous boom. And it wasn't even like you've felt some earthquakes, I'm sure, before, Joe, where it's kind of a slow build. It's almost like a, like a train coming in it, and you feel it and then it kind of goes away. This was just a smack. It was just uh, it was sudden. It was loud. It was hard. After about two seconds, I actually got down right here. This is my desk. Uh, sorry, this is my desk. So uh, I got right down there. This is illustrating how an electric current travels through a solid substance like wood. Now we're going to compare this pattern of an electric current going through a solid. Let's compare it to the liquefaction map. This liquefaction map is from the Anchorage, Alaska earthquake that hit on November 30th. Do you see the similarities? Now look at the epicenter and going out from the epicenter, just look at the pattern. Now the liquefaction is in the magenta pink color that you're seeing. Now let's compare it here to what occurs with an electric current. This is a graph of the geomagnetic activity on November 30th. The disturbance storm time index is a measure in the context of space weather. Historically, it has been used to characterize the size of a geomagnetic storm. Shall we play a game? I'm going to show you a tsunami, Alaska, that's on the way right now. So Alaska Transportation and Public Facilities said Friday there were no injuries. No injuries were reported at the airport, but light fixtures and water pipes. There's tons of water pipes, too. So no water, no heat. And then and they say at least two weeks in this very, very cold weather. Well, that sounds exactly like the power outage game, okay? The game they wanted to play. Now, watch this. This came up last night. This came up on Mike Morales. He did a live cast. I don't even know how I managed to catch it because I don't usually go here. And I clicked in last night and it went live right after I got there. And let me show you, Alaska, what's coming. And it's not being posted on the scenario. Tommy, warning. I'm warning you right now. Watch Back this. Back into their okay, normal give me a second. place. Now watch. Okay, here we go. Listen to this. At least for the wintertime normal place. Okay, here we go. Give me a minute. It's coming. Yeah. All right, so we're back down to the surface winds. Now he's going to check tsunamis. He's going to check the... Uh, Oh, wow, look at that. Look, look at the at waves this. out here. What the heck do we got going? We've seen this happen over there in the Atlantic a couple of weeks ago. We we sent out a warning and 40-foot waves end up hitting Spain. I saw the footage. So let's go ahead and see what we're looking at here. So far, we got 46.5-foot waves. 
You know, is this headed towards Alaska? We'll have yeah, to look. It is. 46 foot waves. 45.3, 48.4. Oh, boy. Let's go up a day, see where this takes it. Okay, listen, I gotta stick this. Oh, man, that thing's headed for the Aleutian Island chains. It could go either way. It Let's could go, go up one more day. It could hit us, too, in southeast. It can. Okay, so it's gonna weaken down, but it's definitely gonna hit Alaska. And we're looking at 27 foot waves. Did you know about that? 25 Alaska? foot waves. I bet you don't. See if we can go up one more day. We're familiar with CMEs, but there's also another solar wind disturbance that creates conditions favorable to geomagnetic storms is a high-speed solar wind stream, or HSS. HSS plow into the slower solar wind in front and create co-rotating interaction regions, or CIRs. These regions are often related to geomagnetic storms that, while less intense than CME storms, often can deposit more energy in Earth's magnetosphere over a longer interval of time. In addition, there are currents produced in the magnetosphere that follow the magnetic field. These are called the field-aligned currents, and these connect to intense currents in the auroral ionosphere. This is from November 30th at the time of the earthquake. Look at the magnetic perturbations or the auroral effects. Geomagnetic storms can modify the path of radio signals and create errors in the positioning information provided by GPS. They can also disrupt global navigation satellite systems and create harmful geomagnetic induced currents in the power grid and the pipelines. The kids are great. Uh, you wanna to talk to Charlie? Charlie, Charlie. What is going on? We don't have much time. Benjamin, what's up? Wh where have you been? It's all shh, shh, gonna turn off. What? It's gonna turn off and it will never, ever turn back on. What's gonna turn off? What are you talking about? Everything. Everything. Did I lose you? Oh, no, no. Miles. Naturally occurring EMPs are of greater concern as they are often less predictable and not preventable. High energy EMPs can even damage buildings and aircraft. Thank you for watching and much love to you all. As yet, please stand by for further details. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program.